It is sometimes claimed that you can target specific regions of a single muscle by using certain exercises or certain techniques. Others claim that you are either training the muscle or you aren't. So which of these statements is more true? Can you actually target specific regions of the same muscle? Throughout this video, we will try to answer this question. To answer this question, we first need to understand the basic anatomy of a muscle. Each muscle is essentially a big bundle of contractile tissue with various different layers. The smallest unit of contractile tissue is what we call a myofibril. This can be thought of as a spaghetti-like structure which runs along the length of the muscle fiber. If we take a bunch of these myofibrils, we get a muscle fiber, a bunch of muscle fibers makes a fascicle, and a bunch of fascicles makes the overall muscle belly. In some muscles, the fibers run all in the same direction, while in other muscles, the fibers run in different directions. For example, a muscle like the biceps has all fibers running in essentially the same direction. However, a muscle like the lats has fibers running in all different directions. This is important to understand because the muscle fibers pull from one attachment site to the other. So based on which direction the fibers run, will determine how we train that muscle, or those specific fibers of the muscle. So to train a muscle, we need it to contract against resistance. In other words, shorten from one point to the other while moving external weight. More about this shortly. While we use these diagrams to assess the general anatomy of each muscle, it is certainly possible for there to be some variation in muscle structure between individuals. For example, this study showed that the pec muscles has some fairly significant variations between individuals. As we can see, this individual has a clear separation of the upper pec from the rest of the pec. This individual has a fan-like fiber structure, and this individual has a more horizontally oriented pec fiber structure. This variation will influence how different parts of the same muscles are recruited and trained because the muscle always pulls from one attachment site to the other. So while we all have the same general muscle structure, it should be understood that there will be some variation between individuals. Therefore, this may influence what exercises and which lifting techniques target different regions of a muscle. So back to how to best train a muscle for growth. We essentially need to stress it by forcing it to contract against resistance. The muscle fibers pull together to shorten and become stressed as a result. Then, as an adaptation to this stress, the muscle grows in size over time. So the anatomical structure of each muscle will determine which movements will train the muscle. For example, the quads would be trained by performing some sort of knee extension exercise since this is the movement which requires the quads to contract. This will be relevant for the rest of this video when discussing hypertrophy of different parts of the same muscle. So now getting back to the original question, is it possible to target specific portions of the same muscle? Well, the short answer is yes. However, there are two different ways in which this can occur, which we will now cover. The first form of variable hypertrophy within the same muscle is fiber-specific muscle growth. This refers to muscle growth of specific fibers of any given muscle. Fiber-specific hypertrophy is certainly a real phenomenon, although the extent to which it will occur is dependent on each muscle. We will see very little variation in fiber hypertrophy for some muscles and more in other muscles. This is dependent on the exercise we implement and the anatomical structure of the muscle. For example, this study explored the effects of different bench press inclination angles on pec muscle activation. As we can see, the upper pec muscle fibers were most active with around a 30 degree incline angle, while the mid and lower pec fibers were most active with the flat bench press. While this isn't a direct measure of muscle hypertrophy, it suggests that specific fibers of a muscle like the pec major are activated more or less with different exercise variations. This is likely because the upper, middle and lower pec fibers all run at different angles and therefore contribute to slightly different movements. Another example of this would be for a muscle like the trapezius. As we can see, the upper fibers run more upward, the middle fibers run more horizontally, and the lower fibers run more downward. This means that different movements will preferentially activate different portions of the trapezius. Shrugging motions will involve more of the very upper fibers, rowing exercises will hit the middle fibers more, 
and pull downs will emphasize the lower portion of the traps. The only study I was able to find showing direct evidence of fiber specific hypertrophy was this study looking at the effect of different foot positions during calf training on gastrocnemius hypertrophy. It was found that performing calf raises with the feet pointed outward resulted in greater muscle growth of the inner calf head, while pointing the toes inward resulted in greater hypertrophy of the outer calf. So it is relatively clear that we can in fact preferentially hypertrophy different fibers of the same muscle. However, is it possible to target different areas along the length of the same muscle fiber? For example, we know that we can target the upper, middle or lower chest, but can we hit the inner or outer chest? Well, it seems that this is certainly possible. Emerging evidence shows that lifting with different exercises, tempos and ranges of motion can all influence which region of the same muscle fibers are targeted. For example, this study compared the effects of Smith machine squats versus leg extensions on quad hypertrophy. It was found that both exercises were similarly effective at growing the quad muscles overall, although each exercise tended to target slightly different regions. As we can see, the Smith machine squats tended to grow the proximal quads, which is the upper portion closer to the hip, while the leg extensions favorably targeted the distal region, which is the lower area of the quad closer to the knee. So we can see that even along the same muscle fibers, we can see variable hypertrophy. Similar results have been seen when comparing different exercises, lifting tempos, and for different muscle groups. However, the evidence is not yet conclusive enough to determine how exactly to target such regions with specific training methods. So what does all of this mean in practice for trainees? Well, it seems that it is certainly possible to target specific areas of the same muscle. We can intentionally target specific fibers based on the anatomical structure, and we can also see regional hypertrophy along the span of the same muscle fibers. For physique development, we generally want each muscle to be maximally developed at all portions. Therefore, the goal is to grow all fibers and all regions of each fiber to their maximal potential. So in practice, we should probably hit each muscle in various different ways throughout a training program and throughout a training career. Training with different exercises, techniques, tempos, lifting equipment, etc. can all provide a slightly unique training stimulus that will probably preference different fibers over others or different regions of the same fibers. So implementing different training methods over time will likely lead to more uniform overall muscle development across a lifting career. Furthermore, providing training variation is probably more important for muscles that have fibers spanning in different directions, like the chest and back muscles for example, and less important for muscles which have a more uniform fiber orientation, like the biceps or hamstrings for example. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Check out flowhighperformance.com for online coaching, training templates, ebooks and more.